Hey there, everyone. This dry heat just, uh... Probably doing one of the most boring things you can do in Elite Dangerous right now. High-grade material farming. <sighs> this would be insufferable without my podcasts. But tonight was a... Well, it's been a relatively quiet night. Something to, to cap off a reasonably productive day. The thing I wanted to talk about tonight was... Uh, Super Cruise mechanic that you spend the most time engaging with really when you're doing high grade emissions farming but it's also exclusively the the realm of explorers scanning and mapping and jumping and scanning and mapping and jumping the amount of time that you spend interacting with the Super Cruise system it, it just feels really anemic really bare bones now, there's a lot of history embedded in, in what this feature is and what it was intended for uh, the original elite concept for travel was to have ships just hyperspace directly from point to point. No intermingling mechanics or anything. If you're going from one station, you just pop out at the station that you're trying to get to. Super simple. A lot like Dark Star 1 if you've ever played that game. It's uh, kind of kind of old, but it was a solid game. It's just that every environment you popped in on, you were always within visual range of a space station or, or something similar to it. There were a couple of scripted missions where you went out into quote-unquote the wilds, but um, as a general rule it was it was a very controlled experience. You didn't feel like you were out exploring anything. In fact there was no exploration whatsoever in that game, uh, aside from finding artifacts. Elite Dangerous has a lot more potential. It has a lot more possibility just baked into the concept and FDEV's been reasonable at cashing in on that possibility engineering I don't hate the engineering system actually I think that being able to, to tinker with different modules is kind of fun I just feel like the engineering system has been a little overblown um, there are some aggressive metas and some issues that I think it's introduced that have made combat and other aspects of the game a little bit a little bit less fun for my particular style of gameplay. I kind of wish that certain weapons weren't as popular as they were. If only so that other weapons that are fun can have an opportunity to shine. So I'm going to stick a big fat disclaimer on, on what's about to come out of my mouth and say that this video contains opinions. And if you want to rage about them, please do so in the comments below, but remember that I'm not a developer, and ultimately FDEV is going to do whatever they want in the situation. So I claim zero control over the outcome. I do like to make videos like these if only to put my opinions out so that the community can respond to them. And maybe a consensus can be reached on something in the game that should get attention. That happened in the past with that big uh, petition that uh, that Rhea and all of the other community people sent a while back. That was controversial. But anyway, I was talking about Super Cruise, so I'll correct from my digression and get back to the point. That um, when I interact with the Super Cruise system, it feels like it's only a travel mechanic. Like, you're just getting from point A to point B, and really only one of a couple of things can happen. You either get where you're going in X amount of time, or you don't. You get interdicted, or you, you know, fall asleep on your keyboard and crash into a star, or something else happens. And there's not a lot of dynamicness in how you get from point A to point B. It's basically just drop out at the central star, fly in a straight line to the whatever the station or destination is. I mean, the, the Super Cruise Assist module that, that I use when I go material farming basically just encapsulates everything that is possible in Super Cruise with one neat little blue triangle. <coughs> and it, it shouldn't necessarily be like that. A, a good example of, of what could happen in Super Cruise that doesn't, and kind of seems like it ought to be happening, is uh, detectability and chip heat. Uh, you, you can't use silent running at all in Super Cruise. And I have to wonder why, because it would make travel between different destinations a little bit more interesting. If I'm in a non-combat ship, 
I would be incentivized to keep my ship heat down as much as possible so that a PvP or some other ne'er-do-well pirate can't find me or has a harder time finding me and has to commit more effort to the process. If I drop out at a central star, maybe there's a certain period of forgiveness where I'm not detectable and I can maneuver freely until I appear on his scanners. Only a couple of seconds. Enough for me to flip silent running on and get myself situated the way that I want. Start getting away from the star. Actually having interference patterns from the star make you harder to detect would be a way to absolve the issue. Theoretically, the, the heat from the star drowns out the signature of your ship if you're close enough. And that would make it easier for ships that are traveling through a system to be harder to detect. And then you can have ways for ships that are looking for a fight that want to rip someone out to, to make sacrifices to improve the odds of them detecting somebody near a star. And you have back and forth like that. I mean, that, that creates a certain degree of depth that incentivizes people to make plans. And, and if you make the, the build setup such that it's hard to get one ship to do everything, then you create an incentive for people to form wings and to group up. And then there is incentive in grouping up to try to do something that is productive. It would help, through, through the nature of the gameplay loops themselves, to tamp down what I like to call pestery gameplay. That the gameplay that doesn't serve an economic function in the game. The gameplay that doesn't forward some goal or work in, in parallel with some objective that the game creates. In other words, just blowing people up for the sake of it because you think it's fun and not because it's uh, promoting power play or pirating somebody for their cargo or interacting with a, a rival faction in the BGS. A, a good example of pestery gameplay is a sidewinder interdicting a, a Type 9 and then just leaving. Like, haha, I cost you three minutes of your life. It, it's not... I don't enjoy that. I think it's irritating. And all that means is that the pestery types will try to look for me when I'm in open play and, and cause me trouble. Because that seems to be most of the incentive for even engaging in in some of the this. Anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dive down that circle. I do like PvP. I'm not a care bear. I just wish that the game channeled the PvP stuff more readily. So that if I wanted to be in a PvP fight in open play, I had a reliable place inside of the game's established loops where that could happen without feeling like it's being forced, without feeling like I'm being singled out because I'm me. And I'm not anyone particularly important. I'm not Yamix or Obsidian Ant. I'm not somebody that people typically hunt for in open play. Most of the encounters I've had have just, have just been me being unlucky. I got started in the game before they had starter systems, so I was flying around Aravate and a Cobra 3 getting pulled by Fertilances, and that is, for a new player, thoroughly unfun when you don't know what to do and somebody just pulls you and blows you up because they feel like it. It it really messes with the game a little bit. It, it messes with your head a little bit, too, because it sucks to lose. And when you don't even know what engineers are yet, and you've only got what is it? Uh, it's not Palin. It's Felicity Farseer unlocked. You've got a lot of hours to go and not a lot of incentive to play in open when everybody else with engineering can just blow you up like, like a gnat on a windshield. You just get splattered. And that that's a, a big part of why a lot of people flee into solo mode. They get used to playing in solo mode when they first get started in the game because they have these encounters, especially when they've got a bunch of missions or exploration data, where somebody just blows them up for no apparent reason, because they can, because it's funny. And it is funny. At least for the person doing the blowing up. It's not fun for the person dying. And if you lose 30 hours of exploration data getting blown up because you don't understand how the detection mechanics work, and you don't know where the dangerous systems are, it really sucks. I've got I, I've I've known people who've sworn off solo who've sworn off open play for that reason. Like anyway. There is a lot of eliteness to Elite Dangerous. And while the community is very supportive of the aforementioned eliteness, there's not the game isn't very good at communicating to you some of the risks of encountering other players. Where 
paradoxically, it's very good at communicating to you how dangerous a particular part of a system might be. You go in here and scroll through and you can see, oh look, these bases have different levels of security and I should be more careful here than I should be here. Um, PvP is the X factor. You really have no idea in open play when you're going to encounter somebody. To be fair though, if unless you're in a couple of specific places, the odds of encountering someone are very low. And I've had open play sessions where I've been in here for hours and not had anybody even show up on my scanner. So it's not as dangerous as people like to think that it is. But there is a level of risk that is sometimes poorly communicated and poorly understood by people who decide to play in open. Wow, I just went on another digression. I'm sorry, guys. Um, <clears throat> back on topic here. There are a bunch of things that FDEV could do to improve the Super Cruise mechanic. I'm just going to rattle some of these off in, in a, as quick an order as I possibly can. Um, one of the issues I have, or issue number one, is that fuel consumption doesn't seem to mean anything. Like, I, I'm sitting here burning 2.02 tons per hour. And if I'm sitting here at 30 kilometers a second, which is Super Cruise equivalent of idle, it doesn't change. And as I cycle up through the throttle range, it, it continues to basically just be 2.02 tons per hour. In the real world, in real world applications, the more that you push a system in any vehicle, the less efficient it becomes, the more fuel you burn. And you hit a, a perfect curve. This would be like the top gear on a transmission with low RPMs on the engine. You are perfect amount of fuel consumption for distance traveled, your most efficient range. And in, in Elite Dangerous, you could incentivize people to travel in this range by, for example, having the drive suffer a greater degree of wear measured in hours or even days if you're an explorer, and by increasing the amount of fuel that the frameshift drive consumes as you approach whatever the maximum safe throttle range for your ship is in a given location. Another issue I have with Super Cruise, um, the, the way that ships accelerate. Every ship in the game has a uniform acceleration and deceleration profile. So a Sidewinder and an Anaconda are basically perfectly matched. The only difference between the two being their pitch yaw and roll rates, where Anacondas are a little bit more unwieldy around stars than Sidewinders. But that doesn't make for very dynamic gameplay, because, well it would make a lot of sense if the smaller ship were faster in Super Cruise. Light boats are faster on the water. Small cars are faster on the road. Nobody, like, even a, a Prius, can beat a semi-truck. And if you're in a Type 9, it would make more sense for a Type 9 to take more effort and more energy to get moving. A Sidewinder should be able to catch up easily, as should a Fertilance compared to a Type 9. So this gives PvPers a little bit more options for chasing down potential piracy victims or even gankers for chasing down whoever the hell they want. The large ships should be the slowest in Super Cruise, or at least should take the most time to accelerate to whatever the theoretical maximum is in Super Cruise. I think it's 2000 C. Um, and, and there should be things that you can do either to your thrusters or your frameshift drive or to other systems on your ship to play with your speed and maneuverability in Super Cruise, perhaps by having a sub-module on the frameshift drive that could increase Super Cruise performance at the cost of jump range. Or do the opposite. If you're a core explorer and you don't care about Super Cruise speed, have a, an attachment, an add-on that increases your jump range at the cost of Super Cruise acceleration. Relationships like that, that give you more options for making decisions and optimizing your ship for your specific type of gameplay. Uh, detectability in Super Cruise, I'm pretty sure, is uniform. I don't think there's any difference between different ships in Super Cruise as far as what they can pick up and when. Since there's no silent running, you can't hide when you pop out in Shinrata Desra. Everybody can just see everybody. And um, you can't hide. Having the detectability of your ship be affected by how hard you're pushing the drive, perhaps by having more heat be produced the farther up the throttle curve that you move because you're burning more fuel and, and there's efficiency issues that would mean that your ships were going to run hotter at higher speeds, just like a car wants to run hotter at higher speeds. Fuel scooping around stars is another example of opportunities where um, you could have an optimal distance from the star that's not just as close as you can possibly get to the exclusion zone. Having there be different distances from the star where you might be able to pick up different quality fuel. 
and maybe having there be different speeds at which different gases that might be in the corona of a star could be picked up, giving fuel scoops the ability to pick things up other than just fuel for your tank. Tritium, for example, is an isotope of hydrogen and is a gas that you could find in the corona of a star since it's a fusion product. It is being actively exuded by the star. And is, it makes more sense for tritium to come from a stellar corona than it does from ice in an asteroid because it's such a lightweight gas. Um, it also makes sense for you to be able to scoop tritium from gas giants directly by flying down into the atmosphere. Yeah, I understand why that hasn't been put in the game. Uh, FDEV's worried about the quality of their gas cloud tech, and so they don't they don't want to give you that ability to fly down into what would end up being 2D sprites and really crappy cloud textures. There's a, a literate argument to be made in that. Um, in favor of that, so I'll put that on the table for now. But it's something that I would like to see. It's something that that should be somewhere on the roadmap, even if it's something that you stick on the under the far future box. Uh, the super cruise mechanic needs attention desperately. Um, or sorry, not the super cruise. The uh, interdiction mini game needs attention desperately. Because as it stands right now, the only real effector you have on it is your ship's pitch roll and yaw rate, which is what makes the Type 9 suck at the game while the Sidewinder is one of the best ships at it, up to a point. I, I really don't, I, I really think that's undynamic. The mass of your ship should play in, and the power of its engines should play into the likelihood that you will or will not be interdicted. A Sidewinder shouldn't be able to interdict a Type 10, an Anaconda, a Federal Corvette, an Imperial Cutter, because a Sidewinder and many of the small ships, in fact, don't really have the ability to beat those ships in single combat. Now, if those ships got in a wing together with other ships, then the odds table gets shifted, and, and I see that as being something that ought to be more possible. But short term, um, no, I don't, I don't like it, and I think it's actually one of the reasons why uh, the interdiction minigame has become more of a pestery mechanic than a functional one. But to, to implement that properly, you'd have to address the wing system. And, and I do think that, I, I do hope that the wing system is getting attention. I, I have to believe that the underlying uh, the underlying code that drives it is getting adjusted to account for physical multi-crew and all these other uh, ground-based gameplay things that FDEV is talking about. Although I have my doubts that the peer-to-peer -peer netcode is going gonna, is gonna to pan out the way that they want it to. I don't, I don't think there are very many shooters that are, are using pure peer-to-peer even Destiny has some type of an, an overseeing server that monitors their games. I don't know if FDEV does or not, but I worry about uh, I worry about the netcode being able to manage 16 people potentially getting in a fight on a planet surface around a settlement. But that's a digression, so I'll, I'll table that for another video. Because uh, as it stands right now, if you get more than four ships in an instance, the netcode starts to get a little wonky. Maybe that's being addressed and we just haven't heard about it yet. But the wing system itself um, in Super Cruise sucks, and, and I'm just going to be blunt about it, not because I'm trying to be mean, but because um, it, it actually drives me nuts and is part of the reason why I don't do wings very often. Um, if you try to set up a wing, and especially if that wing needs to travel between systems, let's say for short-range trade routes, you're going to get strung out badly. Someone's going to get stuck in a Braben tunnel. And that Braben tunnel is going to last like 15 or 20 seconds, and by the time you actually pop out into the system or drop out on the station, your wing's already mostly done with what they came there to do. So you end up with a bunch of ships traveling alone in a big strung out group that kind of defeats the purpose of the wing. Because if someone does get pulled, and it's by a pvp -er, by the time the rest of your wing gets to you, you're dead, and he's gone. And if he really wants to, he can use the block button to force the instance to split and then only engage your wing one at a time at his discretion. Which also kind of sucks. Because, well, it sucks for obvious reasons. I'm not going to get into that either, because that's another rabbit hole that needs its own video. But um, the way it ought to work is if you're traveling in a wing and you navlock on your wing leader in normal space, it, it should do, they should do what Apex Legends does with its jump master system where the, the navlock wing leader, put him in air quotes, uh, controls the whole wing. So when you navlock, your ship autopilot takes over, you get into formation with the wing leader, and when the wing leader jumps, you jump with him. 
and Super Cruise treats your ships as a single entity. When you're in a wing and you're nav locked, you are one big bright F off point in Super Cruise that everybody can see and that probably can be detected at greater ranges. I think it should be susceptible to uh, to the aforementioned stuff that I was talking about, where all four ships could theoretically silent run. and They'd have a, a shared heat profile that might make them more detectable than a ship flying alone, but still, yeah, anyway, rabbit hole stuff. The uh, I'll leave that to the comment section. But uh, wings in Super Cruise should be single entities, and if that wing gets interdicted, the whole wing participates in the interdiction minigame and the, the collective tonnage of the wing gets calculated out such that that a wing of big heavy ships will have an advantage against a wing of smaller lighter ships. And you could throw some curves in there to make it interesting so that that four sidewinders could maybe pull out a, a type 9 and then is two escorts. But that a wing of four type 9s could only really be pullable by a wing of four equally sized large ships. So if you've got a giant string of cargo ships in a row, then you need to attack them with a, a string of other large ships. In part so that you're you're creating a, a gameplay safe check that makes sure that if you're interdicting a wing that you're using ships that are appropriate for the task and that you're not trying to cheese people with little ships just to make their day more miserable. And so that, for example, if you're going after that Type 9, um, you can't go after it with only small ships since small ships wouldn't have the cargo space to take very much cargo at all to, to make the task worth the effort. It would force uh, people who want to go after something like a Type 9 to use either a big ship, something like an Anaconda, or maybe a large medium ship like a Python, or to go after it with a mix of small and medium ships. And that The more people you bring to the party, the more likely you are to succeed, and the more efficiently you're going to be able to raid your take. In the aforementioned case of the Type 9, you're making it hard for small ships to pull so those small ships have to go and find a medium ship, ideally a Type 7, that could potentially have a couple of hundred tons of cargo space to make pulling that Type 9 a worthwhile venture if it's alone. And then the Type 9 has to think about escorts that augment the fight itself, so that you're encouraging people to get in groups and fight in groups, to have for a more interesting experience. And the way that the, that that would make Super Cruise a lot more of, a, of an investment, because then your convoy, you've got three ships potentially looking for attackers, and you're focused on, okay, who's a threat and where are they at, and you have multiple eyes working on the problem while your wing leader is navigating. So then each ship has a specific role, and when you're in a wing, you could make it so that the ships outfitted for detection share their sensor data with the ships that aren't, and everybody's awareness is augmented by the fact that they're in a wing, and it has a direct measurable effect on how effectively the group operates so that you're less likely to have a problem if you're in a wing, but when you have a problem, it's a balanced problem. You know when you get pulled, it's not some joker in a sidewinder trying to just, just mess with you and pester your gameplay session. It's a threat. And it's going to be a couple of sidewinders and maybe an eagle and a Type 9 or, or a, another large ship that's got the mass to try to make the pull work. I, and I, I get really into this stuff because it's, it's like it's possibilities, it's opportunities, it's things that the game should be exploring that, that make combat more interesting, that make the travel mechanics more doable. And that also incentivizes explorers to potentially wing up so that they can tackle a star system together and move through more space in less time. And, and the list just goes on and it really does cascade. I've been in hour-long conversations with people on Kaizen's discords about this stuff because it, it, it bugs me that that FDEV isn't, isn't at least talking about this as a possibility in the future. It bugs me that most of their roadmap is confidential, that they don't talk about what they want to do for the future, in part because the communities burned them over missed promises in the past, but that's... They need to start looking at what Star Citizen's doing in terms of community relations, because even though they're, they're trying, there's so much more that could be done, and there's so many possibilities that... Um, that they should at least acknowledge. And it doesn't have to be some, some grand, elaborate live stream. You can just say, like, they should have a public roadmap. There should be a roadmap that's more um, community-focused than just the next expansion. Because Odyssey's cool, but but as cool as Odyssey is, I really I really wish that FDev would have would have addressed some of these other gameplay loops. Um, fleet, carriers need, fleet carriers need some more love. Engineering needs some more love. Um, we, we need a new ship, badly. I, I think that we're going to get one at some point, and that this Lacon sub-story in Galnet's probably related to it, but, you know, that would help. 
and, and we need a roadmap of of community driven requests and it doesn't need to be like where you're going to get this on this date and this and this date. It should be priority based. It's like, okay, the community wants this to be addressed next. Okay, we're going to do this next. And we're going to try to get to it um, sometime this year. And then and have some updates about it. You know, post to the forum. Say, okay, we've run into this technical issue that we weren't anticipating. Here's some of the details on it. We're going to roll this feature back a couple of months and we're going to bring forward the next feature in line that the community wants addressed and we're going to deal with that um, and bookmark folders should be right at the top of that list like like right at the very top because people have been begging for it forever and bookmark folders would just be so helpful and and there's other organizations that you can throw in there too uh, but those are, are just some of the, the core thoughts that I have about what Elite Dangerous really needs to, to be working on and really needs to be thinking about after Odyssey because yeah I don't think we're going to get any of the stuff I'm talking about in the next probably for at least the next six months if we get it at all because odyssey's got to drop and then we're going to have some stability patches and we're going to have other little you know stuff's going to have to get worked on and, and the the dev team's going to be focused on making sure that the stuff they just built is working right before they think about anything else but um I, i've got a lot more that i can talk about and i don't know how many people will stick for the whole you know 20 something minute video that this is going to end up being but um If you you know if you've got something you want, throw it in the comment section. If you've got topics you want me to discuss, I'm happy to questions about different things in the game. I'm happy to investigate. I've got something fun that I've been working on in the background um, involving a Type 10 because I guess Type 10 is one of my favorite ships. It's I own more Type 10s than I own of anything else. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to be abusing the physics engine a little bit with this uh, with this next Type 10. It's going to be fun. Um, I hope to get that out sometime soon, um, sometime in the next week or two. Anyway, thanks for your time, guys. Um, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and uh, I'll talk to you later.